hear that upper the black machine. They got it pulling aging stories down below the ground. They're putting people in one end, and out comes what they want. How they do it, Papa? Each night they tilt the world on its side, and then every body loose goes rattling to the bottom. Then they hook them by the heels, hang them up, and cut them open. Only by then they got no dinner. Just some bent up ears and stuff, and all they plead is rest. You think I'm raving, because it sounds too awful to be true. But my God, there are things that are true, even though they never really happen. Well, well, well. Here's the chief, the super chief. <laughs> I get the dump! And breakfast and where to go. Don't you know better, huh? Don't you want to stay in your room till that bell ring? Oh, look at him shagging. Big enough to eat apples off my head. And he's scared like a baby. Oh, what you want, baby, huh? You want your broom? <coughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. He wants oh. his broom. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> start sweeping, baby. Yeah, that's a baby. That's a good loom. I'm Broom Brownville. Old Chief Broom. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> you don't mind, boys. I don't think it's wise to group up and stand around like that. Mean old Monday morning, you know. Such a lot to get done. Yes, Mr. Ratchet. That's fine, boys. Williams, you have dormitory duty, don't you? Yes, Mr. Ratchet. And Warren, you might start by getting poor Mr. Brownville shaved. To receive, we thank thee. <laughs> oh, Billy dear, I spoke to your mother last night. I, I had to tell her. Um, what, what did you have? I told her that you were very sorry and you promised not to try it again. Oh, um, uh, thank you, uh, thank you. Drink it all up, dear. Morning, Mr. Scanlon. <laughs> Mr. Cheswick. <laughs> Wait a shake, honey. What are these? Medication. Christ, I can see that. What kind? Just swallow them, Mr. Cheswick, for me. Don't give me that crap. All I want to know it's for the love. It's all right, Charles. What you mean it's all right? You don't have to take them. That's what I mean. You shove any old crap in a gut. I don't. It's okay then. <laughs> Morning! Morning, Mr. Martini. <laughs> Morning! <laughs> Mr. Rockley. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Fuck them all! <laughs> Williams, we have another mission today. I'd like you to meet him at receiving. Yes, Mr. Ratchet. Miss Flynn, I'll be in the staff room. Yes, Mr. Ratchet. Behave yourself, boy. <laughs> What choice we got? I said, you're fucking you done listen. <laughs> you know, I can't say I like the look in your eye. Sit down. I said, sit down! <laughs> yeah, that's some better. Mr. Scanlon, you're Hey, careful there! Damn it! Busting! No! <coughs> no! Hey, sweet thing. Want some uh, help? I don't need it. Thank you. <laughs> Your deal, Martini. Huh? Oh, yeah. Here, here we go, then. Hey, Martini. Cut it out. Well, what's the matter? There's nobody there. Are you, you sure? <laughs> There's only four of us. <laughs> oh, okay, then. Martini, what are you for 
God's sake, stop hallucinating! Don't give me those cards. <laughs> uh, what's so funny? That man's a little nurse. Reminds me of the first time I saw a woman take off her clothes. I was eight, see? I was the up to a bedroom window. By the time she got down to her little panties, I got her shaking so much I fell out of the friggin' tree! <laughs> That's it, Billy. Write it down. Uh, we, we are supposed, supposed to. That's it. Get a gold star by your name. I, you, you, you bring down the things I say. I'm gonna write down some things you did, oh, too. Good. You two shut up. Fuck, 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 fuck. Fuck them on! Oh, for heaven's <laughs> sake. This place is a madhouse. <laughs> Fellow psychopaths, as president of the Patients' Council, I, Dale Harding, do hereby decree ten minutes of blessed therapeutic silence. What do you want so long? I do it! Go ahead, do it. Here's a wee Morning, buddies. <laughs> Mighty nice fall day, huh? Damn, I'm sorry looking, but... Now see here, Mr. Kick your hands up, you boy. And give me one minute to look over my new home. You see, I've never been in an institute of psychology before. <coughs> the name's McMurphy, boys. Or P. McMurphy. And I am a gambling fool. What's that you're playing, boys? Binocular and you. Ain't you got a straight deck, huh? Well, I brought my own just in case. Check them out, boys. Get the two <laughs> positions and check out those pictures. Every one of them different. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
that you're making, huh? A bomb to blow up your whole stinking world. <laughs> well, you've got competition. <laughs> R.P. Mac Murphy, how do you do? You know, I hate to see a man sloshing about in his own water. How about you come down and get yourself dried up, boy? You have to take the nails out. The what? He's one of those Columbia River Indians that used to live up on the fall, but I believe the tribe is now defunct. They're right, Chief. You defunct. He, he can't hear and <coughs> Mr. McMurphy. Howdy, ma'am. <laughs> I'll take that. Hey, William tells me that you're being difficult. Me? I understand. You have refused to take your admission shower. Well, as to that now, ma'am, they, they shot me at the courthouse <laughs> last night at the jail, and I'm sure they would have washed my ears from me on the way over if they found the facilities. <laughs> That's quite amusing, Mr. McMurphy. But you must understand that our policies are need for your cure, which means cooperation. Ma'am, I'll cooperate from hell to Thursday, but you wouldn't want me to be unpolite. I mean, had to get acquainted with my new buddies here. And I do appreciate how you've taken it upon yourself to orient with the other patients. But everything in its own time, you must follow the rules. You know, ma'am, that's the exact thing somebody always tells me about the rules. Just not about to break every single one of them. New admission, Papa. Now they got to fit him with controls. They got wires running to each man and units planted in our brains. There's magnets in the floor so we can't go no way but what they want. We got stone brains and cast iron guts and copper where they took away our bellies. We got cogwheels in our bellies and, and stone brains. Oh, they got switches. They turn on enough. They got a network clear across the land. Factories like this for fixing up mistakes they made outside. The combine pupper. It's big. 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 They got to me way back ago. The way they got to you. Hey ya, uh, hey ya, uh, you hit or sit, hit or sit. Uh, ooh, the king of the land wants a hit, right? <laughs> ooh, a little lady for the lad, and it's all the wall down the road up the hill, drop your load, right? Now, Mr. Scanlon, coming at you, and I wish some asshole in the nurse's hot house to turn off that goddamn music. I never heard such a driving racket in all my life. One minute, boys. Yes? Excuse me, ma'am. Would you mind switching off that goddamn noise? Yes, Mr. McMurphy. Yes, what? Yes, I would mind. Music is considered therapeutic. And what's so therapeutic about lawns well? Please don't lean on the glass. It makes finger marks. Of course, manure. Oh, and Mr. McMurphy, I should remind you, we have a rule against gambling. But ma'am, we're just playing for cigarettes. Are you sure those cigarettes don't represent something else? Yeah, <laughs> a whole lot of smoke. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you girls ought to laugh it up a little. <laughs> you know, that was something good you did say. How about sweet the game, boys? Uh, 
where, where, where would we get money? You kidding me, boy? I found out a few things about this place before I got sent over. Dad nearly had you boys pull down compensation, treat 400 a month, and a draw down nothing but dust. So all you gotta do is sign me some IOU. So it's all right with me. All right, let's see. Every cigarette's worth a quarter. Okay. Okay, run them then, run them. Mr. Murphy, remember see? no gambling for money. Is that a two-way system? No, but Nurse Ratchet is a human radio. Well, I may just have to pull a plug. <laughs> right, there you sit, Professor, with a juice showing, and here's a pack of marbles, and you go back down. <laughs> now what? Group meeting. Time for group meeting. On, 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 on account of, of my mother, um, every every time she comes to visit me, it leaves me feeling awful. Your mother loves you, Billy. I... Billy, darling, I'll be the more fine thing. <laughs> 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 spent in any other institution? Well, including state and county coolers. And a mental institution? No, sir, this is my first time, but I am crazy. I mean, that other doctor doesn't work for him. He said so. How was he? It's written here somewhere, Doc. Yeah, 
repeated outbreaks of passion, which suggests a possible diagnosis of psychopath. Psychopath means I finally fucked. <laughs> well, excuse me, ma'am. Sorry, how did he explain? Um, oh, yeah, I'm overzealous in my sexual relationship. I mean, is that serious, Doc? I mean, you ever be in trouble by it? Hmm? No, Mr. McMurphy. I admit I haven't. You know, that bit about fighting, I can understand, Doc, but who ever heard of a man getting too much poops <laughs> on <laughs> I am, however, interested in this statement. Don't overlook the possibility that this man might be feigning psychosis to avoid the drudgery of the work farm. Well, Mr. McMurphy, what about that? Do I look like a sane man, Doc? <laughs> Doctor, perhaps you should advise Mr. McMurphy on the protocol of these meetings. Mr. McMurphy, the first rule is that the patients must remain seated. Why, sure, Doc. Excuse me there, Mr. Scanlon. You see, Mr. McMurphy, we operate on the principle of the therapeutic community. The which? Therapeutic community. That means that this ward is society in miniature. And as society decides who's sane and who isn't, you've got to measure up. Our goal here is a completely democratic ward, governed by the patients, working to restore you to the outside. Now, it's important that you don't let anything fester inside you. You can talk, you can discuss, you can even confess. And if you hear another patient say anything of significance, you write it down in the logbook for everybody to read. Do you know what that procedure is called? Squealing. <laughs> Group therapy. Help yourself and your friends to probe the inner secrets of the subconscious. Get all those old guilts out into the open. What guilts? <laughs> you have them or you wouldn't be here. Oh yeah, Doc. I see now what you're driving at, yeah. Excellent. Lots of scream I had the other night. Maybe you could explain to me what it means. <laughs> Yeah, it was like, it was like me in the dream, Doc, but then again, it wasn't me in the dream. It was, it was someone that looked like me, you know, like, like, um, uh, my daddy, yeah. Yeah, that's it, it was, my daddy. See, I knew from my daddy, Doc, because, because it looked like, like me, but, but you know, I said it wasn't me. <laughs> but I knew for him because he had this iron bolt to his dog on, just like my daddy used to have. Your, your daddy had an iron bolt through his jawbone? Sure, Doc. A regular Frankenstein. Oh, fascinating. I don't believe I've Doctor, ever Doctor, I think Mr. Matthew, if you might learn better by example. Good idea. According to notes, and by various patients in the law book, Mr. Harding has stated that he feels uneasy when walking in the street because of the manner in which other men stare at his wife. Yeah. He has also stated, quote, She damn well gives them reason to stare, unquote. Yes, he has also been heard to say that he may give her reason to seek sexual attention <coughs> elsewhere. Upon <coughs> reason, Dale. Well, I can't say that I've been notably hardened. Do you mean sexually inadequate? Maybe she's just plain too hot for you. Yeah, that ain't hardy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah I hear you. I'm not afraid. Oh, okay, you're scared. Yeah, yeah. It might be fair yeah. to say intimidated. Same thing. I see Mr. Hardy has also stated that his wife's ample bosom gives him a feeling of inferiority. So why does he marry a broad with such big knockers to begin? <laughs> <laughs> I bet he's got a mother fixation. I bet he was never weak. That's not so. I wanted a womanly woman, one who would not come to She but... has commented, Dale, that she finds you less than masculine. Like the way you use your hands? Yeah. You chose I bought it, Hardy. You chose a woman who was quite obviously your inferior. Don't you find significance in that? Well, yes, but I theorized. It seemed to me sexually at least. Yeah, that I, I, you, you always say how she was <laughs> such a good lady. <laughs> yeah, what happens in the sack? Oh, yeah, Hardy. Complete, complete psychic impotence. Why do I always cry? I say, Hardy! Would it be a lot easier if you came right over and admitted you're a 
try it, buddy. She should be up to disturb. We're sending you down to shock you out. Electrical shock therapy, my friend. A device that combines the best features of the sleeping pill, the electric chair, and the torture rack. You kidding me? I don't know. She goes. <laughs> You're touched on either side of her head with electric wires and zap. Punishment and therapy in one shocking package. Old Chief Broom there's had about 200 treatments. So what about that little part of the doctor then? She needs his approval, of course. That's a formality. He has 200 patients, a bleeding ulcer, and no desire to make waves. Well, what's the matter, friend? Losing your revolutionary spirit. <coughs> what about this Democratic board, Fred? Hmm? Why don't you take a vote? Uh, what? What would we vote? Oh, that the state <coughs> government can't ask us any more questions? Can't look us in a certain way? Can't send us down to Chuck Chuck? Tell us, friend. What shall we vote? The hell, anything! You gotta do something to show you still got balls. I mean, <laughs> this chief here, you say he's scared? Scared of a bunch in my life. I ain't! Well, there's no skin off my ass. Naturally. You think I want some old fiend of a nurse coming at me with three tiling bolts? Of course not. The hell with that! I'm oh, Mr. McMurphy. Welcome to the club. <coughs> you saying she can't do nothing unless she gets her goat yet? That's right. Unless you crack her up too much like, like, like bust her in the nose or cussing her out or... You'd be safe as long as you kept your temper. Hmm. All right. Okay, then, you guys. Think you got the champ? Right. Why don't we take some bets on it, then? <laughs> on what? On me getting the better of her. You propose to make a wager on that? Oh, yeah. I'm wagering that I, I, I'm going to bug her so much that I'm going to stick a burr up that nurse's butt. <laughs> I bug her so much that she's going to come part of them neat little scenes. It shows you she ain't undefeatable. One week, boys, and if I don't have her whether she don't know whether to shit or go blind, well, the money's yours. Oh, boy! <laughs> All right, then. Who will delay ten bucks? I'll pay ten. 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 Papa, they got to place an automatic pilot for the night. It's at night they do things to us they want to. Things too awful for the day. And if the night ain't long enough, they stretch it out. Oh, yes, Papa, that's a fact. They got fake time they can speed up or slow down. I see three months go by once in an hour. I see three days go by like that.
set you're doing there cheap. Jesus. There must be about 10,000 pieces of gum there, Chief. Is that what you stash them on? I'm sure we can do better than that. Juicy fruit okay? Here, Chief. Put a nice, fresh taste in your mouth there, Chief. Quick! Hide! Someone's coming!
I remember one Christmas, Papa, here at the hospital. It was midnight, and the wind was blowing, and the door blows open, whoosh! And here comes a fat man in a red suit with a white beard and a mustache. Ho, 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 he says, like to stay, but got to be hurrying on. Things to do. Well, the aides jumped him, pinned him down with their flashlights, <coughs> gave him a tranquilizer, and whipped him up to disturb. They kept him for six years, Papa. And when they set him free, he was clean shaved and skinny as a bone. <coughs> Now, boys, before we open the meeting, I thought we might have a little discussion. Informal, you know, on the patient McMurphy. Hey, where is that? Yeah. I thought he might have an interview with Dr. Spivy. Now, we don't need to make any decisions, you understand, but I just don't think you should be allowed to go on upsetting the other patients. Well, I ain't upset anyway. Neither am I. You may not <laughs> hear that. What a blast, Doc! What a blast! <laughs> <laughs> Doctor! Doctor, we have a meeting in progress. Oh, I'm so sorry. We were just discussing the matter of morale. Why, well, that's exactly what we were just talking about. Yeah, we and were. I suggested, or was it you? Do hell no, that was all you, Doctor. Well, well I suggested, yeah. what would you think of the con? Oh, God! We're going to have a con! <laughs> What do you think, guys? Uh, 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 I agree. Great idea. Yeah. Thank you. And not without its therapeutic value. Yeah, hell, there, there's lots of therapeutics in a carnival. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Stanley can do his human bomb act. I can't get yeah, yeah. the green top and not the beach room therapy. Yeah, and I can, I can run a skillet wheel, boys. Yeah. Step right up, ladies and gentlemen. Charges. 
It's for your own good, Red Wolf. Yeah, pigs, gizzards. Well, Lois, I'm trying to agree with patient McMurphy. I find him quite lucid, quite in touch. And despite his past record, he has exhibited no tendency towards violence. So I must conclude that electroshock therapy is not indicated. Very well. If there are no further matters, I got a little matter. Doctor, I think you should point out to Mr. McMurphy that the purpose of these meetings is therapy, and that these petty grievances... And what's so petty about the World Series, Doc? The World Series? Yeah, sure, Doc. Game starts this Friday, but you got this little rule on the wall which doesn't allow you to watch TV except at night time. And I'd like to change that to the afternoon. For therapeutic reasons? Therapeutic as hell. Uh, perhaps you were hoping to make some bets on the game. Right, who's for it, boys? Raise your head. Come on now, Chadwick. Why not? Hey, that boy. How about you, Scanlon? I, I don't know. I don't know, man. Mr. Scanlon, as I recall, you refused to uh, eat for three days until you were allowed to watch the TV at 6 instead of 6.30. When a man has got to hear the news, we could be bound clear to hell and to be a week before we knew. <laughs> and they're hearing about it. Maybe they won't harm us this week. That a boy, Scanlon, right. Let's take a vote. Raise your hands if you're in favor. Raise your hand now, boys. In favor. Game's on this Friday. Come on now, boys. Doc, I thought we could take a vote in this kind of thing. Oh, yes. All right, then. Come on, boys. Do you want to watch the game? <laughs> the hell's the matter with you guys? Three, Mr. McMurphy. <coughs> Just three. Not enough to change war policy. So if that settles, Maybe terminate the meeting. Yeah, let's terminate this lousy meeting. Listen, friend of... I know all of us have been on this ward a long time. I don't want to be on this ward a long time. A long, a long time after you leave, and I mean...
No man could lift that thing. At least I tried. God damn it, at least I tried!
That's kid, huh? <laughs> Comes from a good family. Boy, you're, you're not really going to do it. Why not? A party here? That's the scam. Yeah, the candy. Yeah, cute trick, huh? Mm. I'd like to both sell it with that. <laughs> <laughs> audacity, that proposition wins the analyst Oscar. I'd like to bring it out, man. Bring the bravest brawl that's ever been flung in a loop. Oh, man! We're going to have a party! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who the hell's saying anything about we? We are not invited? Hell no. Oh, why? Because <coughs> I'm sick of you jerks, that's why. Yeah. You know what's going on, Spurman? The World Series. And all you dickheads are keeping me from seeing it, so. But, Matt, we tried! Sure, yeah! <laughs> you and Scammon, but all the rest of you two damn scared to put up your hands. Oh, I'm sorry, Matt. If the matter weren't already closed. <laughs> Answering the rules say you can't vote again. Don't recall that there is. <coughs> Haven't you gentlemen work to do? Sure, ma'am, but first, we've got a special meeting of the Patients Council. Called by who? Mr. Dale Harding, President. <laughs> That's right, Miss Ratchet. Called by purpose. For, uh, for. For the purpose of taking a reboot and changing the TV time to the afternoon. I see. Do any of you gentlemen feel perhaps that Mr. McMurphy is imposing his own personal desires on you? I've been thinking you might be happier if he was moved to another ward. You can't send him up to this joint just for taking a vote. That's right. Are you certain one more vote will satisfy you? I just want to find out which one of you birds got guts and which hasn't. Very well. All those in favor of changing the TV times of the afternoon, <laughs> raise your hands. Ha <laughs> 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 ha! Batter up! Get <laughs> Chief to vote, huh? Every patient on the ward. That's how you run this Democratic War crap, huh? Oh, you ward. seem upset, Mr. McMurphy. I'll have to make a note of that. One minute. The meeting is closed. You only one last minute. Come on here, Chief. Come on out here, Chief. Come on out. Come on now, Chief. Here's your big break. Oh, we men are monkeys. Make a break now, Chief. Raise your hand and vote. Come on now, Chief. Don't Raise your hand and vote. He can't even come hear on you. Now, Chief. Raise your hand, vote. Come on, come on, raise your hand. Come on, Chief. Come on, Chief. Come on, Chief. You got it. Come on, Chief. Come on, Chief. Come on, Chief. Come on.
mind picking me up a red hot and can of beer. I mean, do it! Home run! Yeah! All right, now, Martini. Happy, happy. And boy, boy, Martini. Happy, happy, Martini. Try it again now, sir. It's like 
always having people laughing at you constantly because, because you, you're so tough. I, I'm, I'm not tough. And ne neither is Hiring or, or Cheswick, but we do it. Here till my dying day. I guess it didn't occur to us. <laughs> what a load of crap. Yeah. <laughs> now I see why you all coming up to me like I'm Jesus Q Christ. <clears throat> yeah, because I've got everything to lose that you, you, you bastards. <laughs> bastards kind of me. Come by a bunch of wackos. <laughs> Believe me. We had known. <laughs> to hell with that! To hell with you! Yeah, I don't know where my own knock you can't get hooked on you or so. Just quit bugging me. Oh yeah! Just quit bugging me! Them your eyes so clean you're gonna need dark glasses to take a bee. <laughs> yes, Miss Ratchet. Have you gentlemen been reasoning with Mr. McMurphy? Yes, Miss Ratchet. Just what did you say? We explained the therapeutic community. I see. That's just fine, boys. <clears throat> Get up, touch him down here. Get some of that pies and your gum. This is all I got. Took away my canteen privileges. <coughs> Thank you. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Try that again. Go on, you're just a little bit rusty. Come on, say it again. <coughs> Thank you. Just because I'm after catching on to what you've been doing all these years. <laughs> Bide your time till you can tell them off. No, no, I'd be afraid. I say, <clears throat> I'm not big enough. <laughs> Boy, you sure are crazy. <laughs> I've been on mighty few days to reservations in my life, and <laughs> I've never come across an engine as big as you. <laughs> my papa was bigger. Yeah? He was a full chief. His name was Tia Milatuna. That means the pine that stands tallest on the mountain. But my mother got twice his size. <laughs> Boy, you must have had a real moose of an old lady. <laughs> no, she wasn't big that way. She wasn't Indian neither. She was a town woman. Her name was Browner. Uh, yeah, I see what you're getting at there. When, when a town person marries an Indian, that's married to Needham. Yeah, so your, your papa had to take her name. She said she wouldn't be married to no man with a name like Tia Miller Tuna. But it wasn't only her that made him little. Everybody worked on him the way they're working on you. They do. The 
combine. The combine. They wanted to, us to go live someplace else. They wanted to take away our waterfall. In town, they beat up Papa in the alleys and cut off his hair. The combine's big, big. Papa fought it a long time until he was too little to fight no more. And then he signed the papers. My papers, Chief. The papers that gave everything to the government, the village, the falls. Yeah, but now, now Chief, I heard that, that that tribe got paid a huge amount. Oh, yeah. That's what the government guy said. Here's a whole big pot of money. And Papa said, what can you pay for the way a man lives? What can you pay for his right to be an Indian? Oh, but he didn't understand, and neither did the tribe. They stood in front of our door, holding the checks and saying, what should we do now? And Papa couldn't tell them, because he was too little and too drunk. What happened to Jesus? Kept drinking till he died. They found him in the alley, and they kicked dirt in his eyes. The combine whipped him. It, 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 it beats everybody. No, no, so oh, no, yes, yes, it does. Oh, they don't beat you outright. They work on you. Ways you can't even see. No, no, and then no, no, they no, take her easy now, Chief. Take her easy. <laughs> and if, if, you, if you fight... Oh, cool, not... Chief. Cool. I've been talking crazy. Oh, yeah. it, it don't make sense. Well, that's dead now, Shh. You hear them? Yeah. Canada honk is flying south, Chief. It's gonna be nearly winter. Watch. See how they fly across the moon. Why you briar limber luck? What? <laughs> it's an old nursery rhyme my grandmother taught me. Oh, I, I remember, you, you, you use your fingers, you show me your hand, Chief. Yeah, 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 wild bride, live a lock. Three geese in a flock. One flew east. And one flew west. And one flew over the cuckoo's nest. O-U-T spells out. And the goose swoops down and plucks you out. <laughs> 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 plucks you out, Chief, that's a good one. Hey, hey, Mike Murphy. You gonna crawfish? I mean, you gonna back down? Yeah. What's the difference, Chief? Are you? And when I try to lift that thing, <laughs> bet you could do it. No, I'd be afraid. Come on, why don't you give it a try? Oh, I'm not big enough. Well, there's one sure way to find out, Chief. Well, when you do change your mind, you let me know and let me make book on it. Boy, would that be a killer. Mike Murphy, make me big again. Aye, right, Chief. Looks to me like you've grown half a foot already. <laughs> How can I be big if you ain't? How can anybody? Most of you are here because you could not adjust to the outside world. 
You broke the rules of society. Sometime in your childhood, perhaps, you were allowed to get away with that. But when you broke the rules, you knew it. You wanted to be punished, needed to be punished. But that punishment did not come. This leniency on the part of your parents may be the germ of your current illness. I remind you, <coughs> hoping that you will understand that it is entirely for your own good that we enforce discipline. Is there any <coughs> comment? Therefore, I assume you understand me and agree. <coughs> You will also understand that it is difficult to enforce discipline in these surroundings. After all, what can we do to you? You can't be arrested. You can't be sent to an institution. You're already there. All we can do is take away certain privileges. So, after careful consideration of the circumstances, we have decided to take away certain privileges which allowed no encouraged the rebellion to take place. First, for 30 days there shall be no viewing of the television. A gammy. Second, the privilege of card playing during recreational hours is hereby resented. Ah, oh, Christ. Excuse me. Is that all? Not quite. There's one more matter. The behavior of the patient was here almost as long as I. Longer, I believe, than any of you. You all know who I refer to. Long ago, Mr. Bronson was diagnosed as a catatonic, and for that reason it was assumed he could not communicate. So we gave him up. Oh, we forgot poor Mr. Bronson. That was wrong of us. But Mr. Bronson acted wrongly also. Now, please don't misunderstand. We are happy to know that Mr. Bromden can be reached, but disappointed to know that he would conceal this from us, therefore refusing to cooperate in his own cure. <coughs> and if Mr. Bromden can hear, isn't it also logical to assume that he can also speak? I think Mr. Bromden should speak to us, don't you? His first contribution to group therapy. And how appropriate those first words would be if they were an apology. My, an apology for yesterday's behavior that caused the rebellion. My Murphy. <laughs> yes, <laughs> my Murphy. Man, bang and fire. You leave me alone. Go on, Go on, man. Go on, man. Come 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 on, man. <laughs> when you do that old bear hug on them, Chief. <laughs> oh, Chief, you gotta laugh. Come on now, Chief. Well, especially when it ain't funny, you gotta laugh. Come on now, Chief. Come on, Chief. That's <laughs> <laughs> the ticket now, Chief. <laughs> yeah, that'll keep you in balance. 
You know, if you ask me, she, if you ask me, looks me like you've grown already. You getting big, she I mean, look at that foot. As big as a flat car. Yeah, it won't be long now, Chief. You become stomping through town. Yeah, man, women and children knocking back the heels, looking up, going, woo! Look at that big giant up there. Yeah. Taking ten feet steps at a time, only jumping for telephone wires. <laughs> yeah, it comes cutting through town. Stops only long enough for the virgins. The rest of you twitches don't even bother. I know. <laughs> <laughs>
Who are we tearing up today, huh? Who else has enjoyed so much? Perhaps a few more treatments? Oh, why, sure, ma'am. Look at the good few measly votes have done. <laughs> I'd say if we double the charge, we could pick up Channel 8. <laughs> Doctor, I'd like to withdraw that suggestion as for the shock. Oh? Yes, I think it might be more appropriate if he should receive surgical procedure. Well, ma'am? Cut a Quite simple, really. We've had excellent success in aggressive cases. Aggressive? But, well, ma'am, I'm friendly as a pup. Ain't no cost to do no cutting. Oh, Randall, there's no cutting involved. Then, besides, that besides do you no good to lop them off. I mean, I got another fear at home, please. <laughs> <laughs> One moment, Doctor. I'd like to return to the subject. What subject? The subject of surgical procedure for patient McMurphy. Not warranted except in cases of uncontrollable violence. He has exhibited violence. Well, shall we say there was a certain provocation? No, Miss Ratchet, since you brought the matter up in group rather than staff, I will state my opinion. I do not approve of surgical procedure in the absence of recurrent violence. And if it should reoccur? Well, in that case, we may reconsider. And Mr. McMurphy, I would bear that in mind. <laughs> Behave yourself, boys. <coughs> oh, do you change your mind about those treatments, ma'am? I just adore your little battery charger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's that she's mean about that uh, surgical procedure? <laughs> she's talking about a lobotomy. You know what? Sort of a castration for your brain. What the hell's do to you? They say that he used to be a real rough character. Jesus. Look, man, if the boys and I have been talking, we reckon you ought to get out of here. Yeah. 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 We figured out a way. As soon as it gets dark tonight, I can set fire to my mattress. Then we all make a holler, and when the firemen come in, they're going to leave the door open, ain't they? Then we're gonna rush you out! Yeah. <laughs> okay, boys, I'll thank you just like a TV show. <laughs> if I was to leave tonight, surely I'd miss the party. Oh, you yeah, party? party? Yeah, have you forgotten? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, so yeah when we open tonight, I'm gonna set here right on out. Let's call it my going away party. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Supper time, fellas. Move your feet. Food's waiting for you. Supper time. Off you go. Come on. Let's go. Move. Come on. Let's go. Off you go. Off you go. Come on. Move. I hope you're taking your vitamins, Billy, because I think it's candy, girl. No, 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 no. You don't get that full on me now, boy. I bet you will burn that woman down. <laughs> I, um, uh, I, yeah, I'll, I'll burn her. You got any bread, huh? Uh, how much? The 50 bucks. Yeah. What? Well, candy's laid on the liquor there, and then we got old turkey to look after, and... What you looking down your nose at that for, boy? Um, is it something Miss Ratchet said? It's what the hell did she say? How, how... You're winning. And coming out ahead. She turned up yet? She who? Candy. I 
know nothing about no candy. Max said he got a D with you. I ain't got the slightest inclination what you're talking about. Don't go away. Man! Don't go away. Man! Little turkey, old boy. What's the beef, huh? Ain't no beef. Ain't no money changing hands neither. All right. Bag, <coughs> borrowed, stole. But you know, they find out about this, they sure find my ass. She's laying on the liquor, turkey. Yeah? Yeah, a bottle of scotch, a bottle of vodka. <laughs> Which one would you like, huh? Sort of like a bowl. What the hell are we supposed to drink, huh? <laughs> you, you ain't supposed to be drinking nothing at all. Uh, any sign? Yeah, sign, Mac. Ah, oh, boy! How are they supposed to see the wind in the dark? Hey, jerk. Turn on those head on those lights. Come on. Uh, hey, now, that's dangerous. Oh, now, jerk. Oh, well, right, you see the water all lit up at? She's asleep. Oh, shit, folk never sleep. Uh, come on. <laughs> Come on now, Turkey, come on. Hey, hey where's the party? In there. Oh, boy! I think it better be good. Right, give me the wind. Come on, give me the wind. Give me, give me, give me. Come on, come on, come on. Open the wind. She walks in beauty. Well, we let her in there with this mad stud at her. Don't you mama murphy me now, boy. It's too late to back down.
have taught me that mental illness can have the aspect of power. Perhaps the more crazy a person is, the more powerful they can become. Sure, Hitler! <laughs>
not to see her. I asked her to stay. <laughs> She's going to get some help. We have to get you out of here. All right, I got to say goodbye to my buddy. Oh, boy, hey, hurry. Hey, hello, Skeeter. Oh, yeah. Hello, man. Sandy. Uh, Sandy. Best dead buddy die in my hand. You can it there. Yeah, I'm on me. All right, Skeeter. All right. Look at which. You gonna be all right now, Chief? I mean, if not, I come busting back in here and I'm Come on, Mac. Come on, Mac. Go, go. Stop. Stand right where you are. Williams, Warren, root check. So, we've had a party, have we? Roll no doubt by Mr. McMurphy. I wonder was there some sort of problem to be made well, I see what you were trying to do, yeah. Try to put me till I blow up to hell with you, cause I'm here. <laughs> oh, sweet. <laughs> Where were they? It's the closure room on the floor. William Bigger. I am so ashamed. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> You know what this is going to do to her. You know, don't you? <laughs> you? You don't. You don't. You don't need to. Don't need to? How can I not? Please, Billy, please. I have to tell her. Don't, don't. I have to tell her that you are found on the floor of the seclusion Lord, with this prostitute she, that you She made me. She, she, oh, I can't she, believe that she pulled you in there falsely. He went into the doctor's office and found an instrument that cut his throat. That poor boy has killed himself. He's in there on the doctor's chair with his throat cut. I hope you're satisfied. Play with human lives. Gamble with human lives as if you're God. Are you God, Mr. McMurphy? Because somehow I don't think you're God. No, Mac. That's what she wants. Yeah, I don't know what you mean. So come on, Mr. McMurphy. Mr. Big, strong, masculine.
They got to me again, Papa. They got the wires on me and they're giving me orders. Do this, do that, go left, go right. Sign the papers 20 times and keep off the grass. Where can I run, Papa? Where can I hide? There's no place to run. No place to run. Now, the game is 21. You hit or you sit, and what do you do, Scanlon? I oh, just wasn't paying any man. Well, pay some man. Gosh, if we only knew where they got him, what they done to him. He's been down nearly a whole week now. You know what a guy down there who told me? Yeah. He says Matt Murphy knocked out two aides, took away their keys, and escaped. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's mad. <laughs> what ward was your informant from? Disturbed? <laughs> so somebody told me to call him and send him back to the work farm. Who? Well, somebody. <laughs> well, somebody told me that McMurphy sprouted wings. He was last seen orbiting the hospital, defecating on it. Ah, oh, the sweet! <laughs> Isn't it past your bedtime, boys? Miss Ratchet, what we want to know is, when is McMurphy coming back? Yeah. We have a right. I yeah. agree, Mr. Hyde. He will be back. Don't you believe me? Lady, we think you are full of bull, yes. Sure. I assure you, Mr. Hardy, Mr. McMurphy will be back. So now, boys, I think it's time you were in bed. Tidy up on your way out. So what does it say? Mac Murphy, Randall Patrick, post operative, prefrontal lobotomy. So they've done it. That ain't Mac Murphy! No! No, some dummy to read you! Think so! Factory made! Oh, he's right! Yeah, look, you've done a pretty fairly good job though, you know. Look, even the busted nose. I think you do noses! Oh look, 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 its eyes is open! Yeah. All smoked up. And nobody inside. How stupid that big thing we are! Oh, GG! I wish Mike Murphy would yeah, come back! Yeah, yeah. Do you remember the time you pinched 
Superstore slash his ass and said he's only trying to stay in touch. <laughs> and the teams he used to write in the last book, Madam, you wear a B cup, a C cup, or any old cup at all. <laughs> and during the time, that small little nurse. Oh, the one who wears a cross. Yeah, yeah, she knocked a pin down her uniform. And Mac tried to help her get it out. And she hollers, Don't touch me, do me carefully. <laughs> Jesus, Chief. <clears throat> we, we have to get you out of here. We'll say he, he was still alive after you escaped. Anybody can die post-operative. It happens all the time, Chief. Chief, none of us are going to talk, but the big nurse will look at you and you'll say something. <coughs> what should I do? Beat it. Out there? Drag a ride on the highway, head north to Canada. No, no, I am afraid. Chief. I can't do it, I'm not big enough. You're as big as you're gonna get now, Chief. No, no, Mac Murphy said. Mac Murphy says. Chief. Chief, what are you doing? Mac Murphy said. Chief. <coughs> Chief. Ah! Oh, good Lord, Chief, they're gonna come down here with an army. I got it, I got it, I got it. Okay, Chief, now, look. They're gonna make it out there, but you have to go. They're gonna make it out there. Yeah. Yeah. 